boys and girls. It's Miss Langhorn and my old dog, Penny. We are going to read chapter six um, in the world according to Humphrey. It's called Moonlight Madness, and it starts on page 42. Um, I have two dogs, and they're both a little crazy tonight, so hopefully they won't like too much, but hopefully Penny will just take a little snap right here while I read. Okay. Are you ready, Penny? Moonlight Madness. I waited till the school was completely quiet. No students, no teachers, no Mr. Morales. Then I got busy because I had a lot of work to do. Big work for a small hamster. First, I took the Moonlight's Club clipping out of my notebook. Holding it in my mouth, I opened the lock that doesn't lock and scurried across the table. Getting down off the table was still a problem. I grabbed a hold of the leg and slid down, as I've done before. It makes me feel a little queasy in my tummy. But it was worthwhile if I could get out of a girlfriend. I hurried over to the big machine, which was very high off the ground. It seemed impossible for me to get up there. But I had it all planned out in my mind. I crawled up the waste paper basket. I crawled up the waste paper basket. Oh, I didn't know it would sway like that. I leapt over my seat of Miss Bisbang's chair. Whoa, slippery. I crawled up the rungs to the chalk tray behind it, along the chalkboard tray to the bookcase. Then the hardest part, the dive from the bookcase to the overhead projector. If you ever try it yourself, don't look down. I was practically home free, but I still had to get up to the lit part. Still holding the newspaper clipping in my mouth, I grabbed onto the big screw sticking out of the side and pulled myself up. Then I reached as high as I could, just barely managing to touch the top. Good thing I've got big muscles because I was able to pull myself up. I was there. It was like climbing Mount McKinley, the tallest mountain peak in the United States, asked Miss Bigspin. I quickly pushed the switch. I wish I had some some sunglasses because I was suddenly surrounded by a bl blinding light. It was like being inside a light bulb. I took the newspaper clipping out of my mouth and carefully laid it on the flat glass. Then I looked at the wall and no, no, no! Up on the screen was a picture of a car and behind it was jumbled up backwards writing. I realized I must have laid the clipping on the glass upside down. I quickly turned it over and there it was. All the information about the Moonlighters Club right there on the wall with the outline of a car behind it. Aldo would be coming soon. So I hurried back to, to the cage. It was it was faster getting back because it was mostly downhill until the very end when I had to swing myself way up the cord to the blinds and back to the table. I was panting pretty hard by the time I closed the cage door behind me. Hi, Penny. I didn't even have time to catch my breath before Aldo swung the door open. Whoa, who left that on? He exclaimed. As he entered, that thing could overheat. He hurried over to the overhead projector. Look at the wall. Look at the wall, I squeaked. But the words only sounded like hamster wheels. Otto didn't waste a second. He flicked the machine off. All that work for nothing. But then a funny thing happened. Aldo turned the machine back on and looked at the wall. What's this? He muttered. Why did Miss Bisbee, 
Why did Miss Bigsbane have this up here? Hey, nice car. car. He, he squinted up at the screen. Look, Humphrey, the Moonlighters Club. For people who work at night like me. And me, I thought. I was still quite exhausted from all that effort. Aldo stared at the big ad on the wall for a while. Then he turned off the projector and went to work and never mentioned it again. Penny, stop barking, please. We're trying to read. Yes, I was annoyed. I had failed, but at least I had tried, which was more than I could say for one of my classmates. Yes, Saya Naz Nazari. With my own furry ears, I had heard her promise Miss Bigsby that she would raise her hand in class. But so far, she had been as silent as a statue. Her week was almost up, even though I scolded her the day she fed me. She paid no more attention to me than she had her, her, her teacher. You should really listen to your teacher, even Miss Bigsby. And you should always listen to your hamster. I was worried about Aldo and about Saya. But I had to admit, my journey had been so tiring that, nocturnal or not, I slept soundly the rest of the night. The next day began in a very surprising way. I have something to share with you, Ms. Mrs. Biggs being announced. She held up a postcard with a picture of colorful parrots perched in the lush green trees. A postcard from Miss. Mac, 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 Mac Miss Bigsby would have never called her Miss Mac. It said, greetings to my favorite class in the world, room 26. I am now working in a school here in Brazil. This country is beautiful and friendly. I really enjoy talking with the parrots and the rainforest. I miss you all, especially my pal Humphrey. Lots of love, Miss Mac. Miss Bigsbane had to say Miss Max since that's the way the card was signed. Happy, happy, happy. Not only did Miss Mac remember me, she missed me most of all. Oh, I missed her most of all too, especially every time she looked at Miss Bigsbane and she glared back at me. Miss Bigsby showed us Brazil on the map and it's far away. I would like to be that far away from Miss Bigsby. My head was so full of memories of, of Miss Mac that I only got 75% of my vocabulary test. After we graded the test in class, Miss Bigsby said, if you got a hundred on the test, please raise your hand. That woke me up. What a clever, clever way for Saya to raise her hand because she always got 100%. AJ raised his hand, Art raised his hand. Saya just stared down at her desktop. I was, I was starting to get very mad, really mad at her. When, when it was time for map work, Miss Bisbang clicked the overhead projector and there it was, the Moonlighters Club. Ab, right on the wall. Miss Bigsbane wrinkled her nose and picked up the paper and looked at both sides. Then she held it up to the light. I think maybe she noticed those little tiny holes my teeth had made when I carried it over there. Miss Bigsbane looked over at my cage and wrinkled her nose. Then she crumbled the paper and threw it in the waste basket. She's so smart but she is also mean. She's not the only one. While she went on with her map work, wait for the bell, Garth Tudwell started making very rude noises, like Penny is barking and making rude noises. Okay. 
Miss Biggs Bing didn't even turn around. When someone started giggling, she just said, stop giggling, Gail. So Gar's rude noises got louder and even more ruder. A lot of other kids giggled along with Gail. Suddenly the teacher spun around to face them. Very well, the whole class will stay in during recess for extra vocabulary words. She announced, everyone groaned. It's Gar's fault, said Heidi. Raise your hand, Miss Bisbee snapped back. You will all stay in during recess unless the person making those noises wants to step forward and admit it. No one said a word, but everyone glared at Garth, including me. Okay, I did it, he said. Raise your hand, Heidi whispered loudly. Very well, Garth. You, Heidi, and Gail will stay in during reach recess, the teacher said firmly. Heidi and Gail protested until the bell rang, but all three of them stayed in during recess. Instead of making them do extra vocabulary words, though, Miss Bigsby let them rest their heads on their desk. After she lectured them about their behavior, of course, all this commotion made me a little hungry. And for some reason, I hadn't been fed yet. So I decided to squeak up for myself. Miss Beans Bay turned and pointed at me angrily. I don't need any trouble at you either, she said. Heidi raised her hand. I don't think he's been fed today, she said. Miss Bisbang told Garth to feed me. Then she dismissed the girls and told him to go outside and play for the rest of recess. So she wasn't completely mean to them anyway. She even trusted Garth to be alone in the room while she took some papers down to the office. I've always liked Wait for the Bell Garth, so I was surprised when he started grumbling at me as he filled my water bottle and put some fresh mealworms in my cage. One of these days you'll get in trouble too, he said. I'll see to that. Huh? I squeaked. Everyone hates me and loves you. You're just a rat in disguise. The words hurt me a lot. Why would Garth say that? I mean, sure, almost everybody does love me. But that, but I don't make rude noises and get other people into trouble. I was still pondering Garth's behavior when my classmates returned to room 26. Miss Bisbang must have gotten rested up over recess because she greeted them with a smile. I have a surprise for you, she told the kids. Surprises always gets the class attention. They think surprises are always good. However, I know that surprises can sometimes be bad, like the other day Miss Mac left me forever. We are going to pick who gets to take Humphrey home for the weekend, she explained. Now you all know whether or not your parents gave permission for you to bring him home. So if you liked Humphrey, if wait, so if you would like Humphrey this weekend, raise your hand now. Hey, 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 you should have seen those hands went up. All those hands went up. I could hardly believe my eyes. Miranda, Heidi, and AJ, and every single hand in class, except Garth's. Even Saya, Nazari, Nazari, wait, Nazari, raised her hand. Miss Big Spang noticed. Saya, do you think it'll be all right with your parents, she asked. Saya nodded her head. I can't hear you, said Miss Big Spang. Yes, ma'am said Saya. It was strange to hear her voice in the classroom. Miss Bigsbane, Miss Bigsbane gave her a note to bring back to her family on Friday. I nap for the rest of the afternoon, but whenever I woke up, 
and glanced over at Saya's desk. I saw her doing something I'd never seen before. Smiling. Tip six. You can leave your hamster alone for a, a day or two. Otherwise, find a suitable caretaker or, if possible, take your hamster with you in his own cage. A hamster can be very portable. Guide to the Care and Feeding of Hamsters, Dr. Harvey H. Hammer. I hope you enjoy Chapter 6, and I hope you are enjoying reading The World According to Humphrey. Sorry about the disruption with the dogs and Penny barking, so... Um, Enjoy Humphrey.